Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. May 25, 2022 Wednesday. Ito po ang The Stock Market Today. Kung first time niyo po sa channel, po si Benji Chidoro, isang retired bank officer na nagsimula mag-invest sa Philippine Stock Market noong 2007. And I do this report daily. Nire-report ko rin po ang latest news on your favorite and most active stocks. Kung gusto niyo po ng content, inimitan ko po kayo mag-subscribe sa aking channel. At uh, kung meron po kayong stocks na gustong ipareview use, using technical analysis, comment lang po sa comment box at aking pa-prioritize. Hindi po ako financial advisor. Ang mga sasabihin ko po dito ay hindi po financial advice. Ang ating News ay isang special report mula sa Philippine Star kasama ang ating financial headlines at ang resulta ng trading sa ating PSE ngayong araw, May 25, 2022. Dito lamang sa The Stock Market Today. Okay, tingnan natin ang financial headlines. And uh, galing po ito sa business world, DBCC lowers growth target for 2022. DBCC is Development Budget Coordination Committee. Philippine situation is very different from Sri Lanka, sabi ng mga ekonomista. Dominguez says no basis for BIR closure order against Mega World. At dito naman sa ating corporate news, Globe Group working to typhoon-proof fiber network. Then, Gokongwei firm signs shareholder deal with Baxicare. Santa Lucia lands profit up 66%. And ASEN Australia starts building 50 megawatt battery for solar farm. Pero may news po natin ay mula sa Philippine Star, tungkol po ito sa mga tycoons o yung mga businessmen inside Marcos Jr.'s circle. And this article was written by Iris Mendoza of the Philippine Star. One can almost hear the merry banter of some of the country's businessmen, mischievous laughs of a stranger charming even just looking at those post-election countdown photos and presumptive president Ferdinand Marcos Jr. that we saw on our timelines and moving walls. Causing up was the term used by some of it. Others call it Bagong Nipunan 2.0. But photographs are really silly indicators of one's closeness to a person, especially those in power. Photographs capture a moment in time nothing more. Who was it who said that when you look at the photo, you do not see what or who is inside the frame? Do you not see what went on moments before or minutes after? The truth is some of the country's tycoons are indeed closer to Marcos Jr. than others with or without photos. And whoever is seen in a photo with him is not necessarily in in quote unquote former political allies let's look at the housing king Manuel B. Villar Jr. the country's richest man for instance I didn't see him in the photos during the countdown victory dinner unless I missed it but make no mistake with or without the so-called Kodak moments Villar and Marcos Jr. go way back They were both neophyte congressmen in 1992, and when Villar ran for president in 2010, Marcos Jr. was part of his senatorial slate under his Nacionalista Party. Marcos Jr. was a re-electionist then and won. Incidentally, also part of the slate was Susan Tutz Ople, whom Marcos Jr. named on Monday as head of the Department of Migrant Workers. She is the daughter of the late Blas Ople 
who served as secretary and late minister of labor and employment for 19 years under the administration of Marcos Sr. Going back to Villar, he was also perhaps the most vocal supporter of Marcos Jr. among the country's tycoons. In March, Villar announced his support for Marcos Jr. and his running mate, presidential daughter Indai Sara Duterte. For the May 2022 elections, the Nationalist Party fully supports the candidates of Bongbong Marcos for president and Indai Sara for vice president, said Villar, president and chairman of the party back then. The two candidates' message of unity will be good for the country, said Villar, whose endorsement came a day after he posted a birthday and congratulatory greeting for President Duterte for a job well done. In a recent chat, Villar said he never really had a chance to get to know Marcos Sr., but he and Junior indeed really go way back as lawmakers. One of Uniteam's biggest rallies was held in Las Piñas, aka Villar Country. Tycoon Ramon RSA Ang, head of San Miguel Corp, is of course a constant supporter of every administration, but the ties with the Marcoses also go all the way back to the time of Marcos Sr., though the late Eduardo Danding Coanco Jr., former chairman of SMC and touted as one of Marcos Sr.'s protégés. RSA and Marcos Jr.'s known close friend in Nigo Sobel are also both behind listed top frontier, the largest shareholder of SMC. Sobel is the son of the late industrialist Enrique Sobel, the cousin of Ayala patriarch Jaime Sobel de Ayala. There's also Sabin Aboitis, president and CEO of Aboitis Equity Ventures. Sabin and Marcos Jr.'s children are friends and schoolmates. Sabin's wife, Bettina Araneta Aboitis, also served as former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo's social secretary for nine and a half years. Tycoon Roberto V. Ongpin, the trade minister of Marcos Sr., who was practically based in his island paradise, Balesin, or Belsin, managed to remain friends with Marcos Jr. and his wife Lisa through the years. I heard that Lisa also still calls him every now and then for advice. Other tycoons, Enrique Razon and Lance Gokongwei, are said to be in the good graces of Marcos Jr. as well, at least from what I heard. Razon, of course, is the astute survivor who knows how to play his game and has good anticipatory instincts. As for Lance, well, everyone likes the Gokongwei group, unless perhaps you happen to be in one of the delayed flights of Cebu Pacific. That, of course, is another story and is not always the carrier's fault. Notorious members of the Davao group are no longer in, I hear. There's also some rivalry or falling apart among the members of the infamous group from the Philippines' DC or Davao city, but that's not really Marcos Jr.'s concern. In any case, I heard that among Davaoenos, the Florendos and the Lagdameos, whose link to the Marcoses also go way back to the time of Marcos Sr., are not surprisingly in. How deep inside these tycoons are in Marcos Jr.'s circle and how they will use their ties, we still have to wait and see. But here's what I'm hoping for. Friends they may be, but chronoism is what characterized the term of Marcos Sr. should never be allowed to destroy our economy again. The incoming administration must ensure a level playing field, minimum crony intervention, if that is even possible, fair rules governing private sector partnerships, and more prosperous life for all, and not just for the powerful few. Yan. Yan po ang article natin today, a special feature from Eyes Wide Open by Iris Gonzalez of the Philippine Star. So 
Tingnan nyo po yung mga stocks na yan, ano? yung SMC, yung VLL, yung uh, ICT, Integrated Terminals, no? yung Kerazon. Pero hindi po na-mention dito, I think the Pangilina, no? hindi na-mention dito. So, before we go to our Philippine Stock Exchange Index, let me read some comments here. Sabi ni Philip Gons, si Suki, Thanks, sir. Anong nangyari sa market today? <laughs> Ikaw talaga, Philip. Ano? Napanood mo naman yung aking video eh. Okay, Raymond Flores. Kayo lang po ang pag-asa namin para malaman namin ang kalakaran sa stock market kasi ang TV walang nababalita para alam namin kung umaangat o gumabagsak ang ekonomiya ng bansa. O nga, no? yung regular TV, wala po doon. Pero kung meron po kayong cable like ANC, nababalita po yun every time in the morning, meron pong segment doon. 30 minutes before opening the stock market. Pero sky cable po yun, hindi po yung regular TV. Okay, and then Abu Ahmed, thanks Sir Bench. Okay, so let's now go to the Philippine Stock Exchange and the Philippine Stock Exchange Index on how it performed today. The Philippine Stock Exchange gained 20.31 points. Maliit lang, no? 0.31% up. Ang index ngayon ay nasa 6597.76. Pero bearish pa rin po ang ating outlook sa, ex sa index. Ano? Nasa 48.72 po yung RSI. And noong uh, May 13, oversold na po siya. No? Pero... We're not out of the woods yet, ano? I got this from the business world. This is referring to the index yesterday. Eh? PSEI sinks further as net foreign selling surges. So, hindi lang po yung problema ng sa China at sa Ukraine ang nagiging issue dito, kundi pati yung pag-alis ng mga foreign funds. Okay? So, we are still awaiting the economic team except for the NEDA secretary, no? Na, na name na. We are still uh, awaiting the announcement for the economic team of presumptive president Marcos Jr. Bongbong Marcos Jr. Okay? In the market activity, 107 companies declined, 76 advanced, while 57 remained unchanged. The old share index ended flat. 0.10% increase la, no? or 3.64 points up. So, halos wala. Halos walang ginalaw. In the sectoral indices, the financial and holding companies are the only bright spots, while the industrials, mining, properties, and services were down. So, almost maliliit la, no? except that the holding companies had a 1.18% increase and that pulled the index up. In the market status, we will be reviewing the most active stocks, you know, but we will be reviewing your, re your request. No? Converge is the most active, but we'll be reviewing GTCAP, SM, Ayala Corporation. Then, for a while, we haven't taken a look at Dito. Tingnan po natin si Dito. MWC and DMC to complete the six stocks that we will be reviewing so GT Cup po muna yan naku GT Cup bearish po bearish to sideways ang movement nyo and the earnings naman is kumikita naman po no si GT Cup yung first quarter and yung 2021 earnings is gain no? kumikita naman po but it is sideways to bearish po ang kanyang movement and um Downward movement started here on March 9, no? Nung nagkaroon ng cross dito sa, sa itaas, no? Yung orange indicator na already above the candlestick. Nag-cross po yung medium at saka long term. Halos at one point here on March 9 to March 10. And from there... The long-term indicator was now moving downwards. Now, RSI is also bearish at 44. In the meantime, 
ang ating support nandito po sa area ng to. Or let's just draw a parallel channel. No? I think a parallel channel would be more appropriate here. The resistance follows the MA100 while the support is here at it's at 472 yung ating support natin for GT cup support and resistance di po yan exact points but these are areas then CSM naman SM I think okay just moving sideways although the general direction of our prices is moving downwards so okay RSI is bearish at 49 and uh, again let's draw a parallel channel here the resistance follows the emma 50 yeah so the support is at 876.92 while resistance is at 864.83 or 865 786 or 87 po ang ating support ni sm and it continues to move downwards your rsi is also at the midpoint bearish po 49.25 although it is somewhat or uh, somewhere in the midpoint in general the movement of our stocks is downwards no? it, it follows the index so yung gt cup and sm are both index stocks and then after sm tingnan naman natin si ayala corporation Ayala Corporation is naku bearish din, ano? It's also bearish. Although it has, it appears to have hit the support area here. Yan po, 661 ang support po ni Ayala Corporation. And the bearish sentiment started on March 9. So, ito po natin, similar to SM and GT Cup ay patuli pong bumababa and it started in this area and right now the stock has reached oversold level here on May 13 to 14 and uh, it began to rise pero bearish pa rin po no? nasa 31 ang ating stock na ito however Ayala Corporation is a very good company and it has been there since the spanish time blue chip stock po ito okay so somehow that stock will recover from from this and i suppose if you are a long-term investor maganda na pong bumili pero antayin po natin muna na yung trend ay paakyat okay after ayala corporation Dito. Naku, si dito. It has been moving downwards. Actually, it has it moved up here in December to February 2021 before falling. Yan. So after that time here in February, it reached a peak on February 23, no? Pero after that, naku, it has been downhill. The stock has been downhill. So, I suggest that we stay away from the stock muna. It has reached oversold level on May 4, but it continues to plummet. Um, makikita po ninyo, meron po tayong gap down dito. Ito po, no? Yan. And what's causing this? Hindi ko po alam. And probably because of the exit of the Duterte administration and the, syempre, itong uh, dito, malapit po ito sa present administration. No? But uh, we don't know, actually, its relationship with the present administration. Okay? So, yung RSI po natin, bearish po at 37 with support here at uh, 454 or 455. Yeah. Okay, so support level na po itong price na ito. Then MWC. So MWC is bearish. Although there is a red candlestick here, 
it di, hindi po ito breakout no kasi wala pong volume on stock however the support seems to be holding here at this level nasa 1697 po ang pinaka support area and the level now is higher than the short term indicator EMA 20 of 1794 no nasa 1844 na po siya but the EMA50 is at 19.03, no? so halos matatouch na niya yung, yung midpoint or yung mid-moving uh, average. RSI, however, is showing some bullish indication at 52. No? Kasi 5.37 po ang tinaas po ng Manila Water. Let's see if there is news. Ah, okay. So... Tumaasya because there is news here that Manila Water got the contract for GWI VG Kabuag. I don't know what this project is about, but uh, apparently it cost people or traders to buy the stock. Yan po no? Ang pinakamalapit na resistance nandito po sa area nito. Nasa 2042. Support and resistance, di po yan exact points, but these are areas. Finally, we have DMC. Yeah, bullish po si DMC. And although this is a short candlestick, there is volume here. At mapapansin ninyo sa pagka meron pong volume, tumataas po subsequently yung stock. So, makita po natin dito, patuloy po yung pagtaas ng stock. In May 2021, it seems to be consolidating here. Oh, sorry. On October 2020, it seems to be on a downhill trend, but it um, it reversed no noong October 19, 2020, and from that time on, pataas na rin po yung, yung ating stock. Ano? Let's draw again a parallel channel. More or less, yan po yung movement niya. Yan po. So, ang pinaka-support niya, nasa 1818, while the resistance is at 9.48, bullish po siya. RSI is now at 63.61. Okay, DMC Holdings is the holding comp is a holding company, no? And its uh, businesses po niya is water, construction, mining. Okay, so yan po ang ating report sa stock market. May 25, 20. 22. Ito po si Benji Chodoro. Nagpapaalala, mag-ingat sa COVID, mag-ingat sa scam. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Love your country. Give our new leaders a chance, but continue to do what is good, right, and just. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagtangkilik. Hanggang sa muli, stay safe, God bless, and bye for now.